Okay, so we've talked about how we can maximize the glide ratio for zero wind. Uh, and, we, and what I said was that we will not cover here how to do that with wind. However, the process that you follow is the same. But I did want to talk a little bit about how wind affects the glide ratio and also how the wing loading affects the glide ratio because it's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at first the effects of wind on the glide ratio. Okay, so, uh, excuse me, not on the glide ratio, but on the best glide ratio airspeed. So that's going to be VGB. Okay, so the way this looks, I'm going to draw a plot here. It looks something like this. So if we have on the x-axis the wind speed, and on the y-axis the best uh, glide ratio airspeed. And let's say that the wind, the, uh, wind speed goes from negative 50 to 50. And the our best glide airspeed for this aircraft, this is, we'll just say this is an example general aviation aircraft, it'll go from about 90 to 120. Okay, so we got about 100 here and 110. All right, so it looks something like this. All right, we're going to look at two cases, okay? So I say wind speed, but there's different types of wind, right? You may have wind coming at you, wind behind you, or wind coming from the side. So in the case of a headwind, or, in the, or a negative headwind would be a tailwind, the best glide airspeed is going to change. So you can imagine that if we have a tailwind, then we'd want a lower best glide airspeed because the, the tailwind helps us. If we have a headwind where the wind is coming toward us, then we'll need to have a faster uh, best glide airspeed because we're, you know, we need to we need to travel to counteract that that wind that's coming at us. So it looks something like this, okay? So it increases as our headwind speed increases. So this is a headwind. However, in the case of a crosswind we find that if we, the higher the crosswind is from either direction, the higher airspeed we need. And if there's lo a low crosswind or zero crosswind, we need less airspeed. Or our, our best glide ratio airspeed is lower. Okay. Okay, so that's not too surprising. Right? I think that's, that's fairly, fairly reasonable. But something kind of interesting happens when we look at the wing loading. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to erase these things here. And instead of looking at the best glide airspeed, we're going to look at the glide ratio. Okay. This is the glide ratio. And we're going to go from 0 to 20 or excuse me, from 5 to 20. Okay, so for this aircraft, um, well, and, and I guess we're going to be talking only about headwind in this case. Okay, so what I'm going to draw here is the glide ratio as a function of headwind speed, um, and I'm going to draw that for several different amounts of wing loading or several, several different amounts of weight. Okay, so we're going to assume that the aircraft wing area is fixed. So SW fixed. And we're going to look at varying the weight. So what that does is it varies the wing loading. Okay? So let's see. Our nominal case um, is about, well, I, we'll just say we have a nominal weight. Okay? And our glide ratio is going to look something like this. Okay, so as we, as the headwind increases, so as we get faster and faster wind coming toward us, our glide ratio decreases. So a tailwind is going to help us to increase our glide ratio. 
So that should be pretty intuitive, right? Because the tailwind helps push us forward. Um, so we're, we're traveling uh, further forward uh, per, per amount that we travel down, okay? Now, if we decrease the weight, so in other words, what we're doing is we're decreasing the wing loading, we start to get stuff that looks like this. Okay, so that's a little bit exaggerated, but this is decreasing weight and decreasing wing loading. Okay, but the interesting thing to note here is that <clears throat> at, in, the, in the case that we have high headwind speeds, the, the case here that has the highest glide ratio is the highest wing loading case, which means that we have the most weight. Now it might seem counterintuitive that, that you would get a better glide ratio by increasing the weight of the aircraft, because we know as we increase the weight, we get more drag, right? We get more induced drag, and, and so it seems like that should hurt us, right? But there's actually a reason for this, and it's because there is a drag and potential energy trade-off. Okay, so think of it this way. Um, for every, so as an aircraft with no power uh, travels through the air, and as it slowly sinks, the the energy that it's getting to overcome drag is coming from potential energy, right? Because there's, there's nothing else keeping that thing. Uh, there's no power keeping that thing up. It's, it's just sinking. Okay. And so, um, there's this trade off between drag and potential energy, right? So we have drag, we have to overcome it with potential energy. Now, as we increase the weight, uh, our potential energy also increases. And I already mentioned that as we increase the weight, our drag increases. But the way that those increase is different. Okay? And so, um, what, this, what this means, this trade-off kind of balances out together that when we have a headwind, the increase in weight gives us more benefits in potential energy than it does detriment and drag. And so we get a better glide ratio. But if we have a tailwind, then the opposite happens where we, we get more potential energy, but the drag outweighs the benefits that we get in potential energy. And the result is that when we have a headwind, higher wing loading means higher glide ratio. When we have a tailwind, higher, uh, higher weight, higher wing loading means a lower glide ratio, okay? So that's just something that's kind of interesting and it might not have been very intuitive.